It feels harder and harder to have real, honest conversations these days. Between clickbait, rage posts, sponsored content, all of it that just feels built to get us to buy something or to make us angry so we engage with it, everything just feels so surface and so fake. So how do we foster sincerity and honesty in our daily lives? How do we create space for people to just be people when so much of what we go through feels dehumanizing and aimless? Cynicism is easy because it doesn't require us to do anything. We can sit back, not challenge ourselves, not grow, and not have to actually face any of our problems when we're just being cynical about a situation. And this goes for our personal lives, our relationships, our jobs, our art, literally anything. It is all impacted by our ability or inability to be sincere. I'm Zach Van Ness, and this is Grinding to a Halt. I think that the struggle for authenticity is particularly strong today. We live in an era of hyperconnectivity where everyone's available all the time and lines are blurred between public, professional, and private life. And although there's this connectivity and everyone's available, we're actually less connected than we've ever been. People feel lonely at higher rates than they ever have. And social media often rewards the performative nature of our personalities, the performative aspects of happiness and success. And then it creates this pressure to conform to these idealized standards. And these are standards that we all know that we can't actually obtain and that even the people putting those standards forth have not obtained because it's not possible. So this then leads to this cycle of inauthenticity and to insecurity, which then loops back and creates even more inauthentic behavior. So we hide our true selves behind these carefully curated personas, behind the person we want people to believe we are and not the person that we actually are. But why does it matter? Why does being performative matter? Why does a lack of sincerity matter? Because without sincerity, we miss the chance to connect on a deeper level. We miss the chance to understand and to be understood. And in thinking about this lack of sincerity and the performative nature of most of our lives, it has caused me to kind of take a step back and reevaluate the way I approach life as a whole. So over the last few years, I've taken a couple different approaches. I think one that makes the most sense and is probably most relatable would be in a job interview process. We've all interviewed for jobs. And we all know that it's kind of expected that you go in and you perform and you be the person that you think they want for the role. And I did that for years and it was somewhat successful. But a couple years ago, I switched that up and I started being more intentional in how I approached the interview process. I was less censored in the way that I spoke about things. I made sure that I was putting forth my actual personality and my actual thoughts and making sure that they understood who I am in the most accurate and sincere way I could professionally put that forward. So a good example would be that I, as a person in marketing, like to talk about the damage that I think that marketing has done, the ways that agencies have screwed over customers about the concerns I have about being in that line of work as a whole, uh, pushing products that I do not believe in or just trying to make rich people even richer. These are all things that I find to be not only meaningless, but possibly harmful and negative. So how can I approach the career path that I have chosen in the most honest and ethical way possible? How can I do the most amount of good in a situation where I think a lot of bad is done? And when I started approaching things that way, when I started talking about my actual thoughts and my actual feelings, I would have people on the other side of that interview table, tell me that they think those same things. 
that they also struggle with the line of work that they're in, that they also think they might be doing something that morally they don't approve of, that they feel like maybe they have fallen short of the person that they wanted to be. And it is reassuring to hear that other people think the same thing. And a lot of us feel the same. I talked about this on a recent episode about no one wanting to work. And it's not that people are lazy. It's not that people don't have drive. It's that we are disillusioned with what the realities of this current system is. And that it does not actually serve us. That it serves like 14 people total. And the rest of us just have to do all the work to make those 14 people rich. So the more we talk about those things, as the people that are all on level playing ground, that we're all in this together, the more people feel comfortable talking about it. So my approach of just being sincere and just being honest has led to building actual connections with those people during the interview process. And sometimes it goes great. And the feedback is that it's refreshing to have someone just be honest and not just come in and play the part. And sometimes it doesn't work. And that's fine. I don't need everyone to agree with me or to think the same thing I think. But I would rather them not like me for me than hire me for the person that I pretended to be. And speaking from my own experience, you know, as a a male, I feel like so many men are taught not to be sincere and not be honest i think that the the journey to sincerity is fraught with social expectations that from a young age boys are often taught to suppress their emotions to be stoic and be strong to never show any sort of vulnerability and culturally the script that we're fed discourages open emotional expression and it, it flips this switch that is really hard to flip back on. It pulls us out of touch with who we actually are as people and what we actually feel. And it makes us bury those things. It tells us that if things get too uncomfortable because they're too honest and too sincere, that you play it off with a joke or indifference. And this results in this complete disconnect from our own emotions and the ability to express those emotions. And then that inability to be sincere without feeling the need to play it off as a joke seeps into every aspect of our lives, professionally, personally, relationships. It takes us out of touch with who we are because we've been told that who we are is bad. Being aware of who we are is bad. Expressing who we are is bad. And it's deeply, deeply damaging. And as dumb as it might sound, the... The idea for this episode came from a song, and that song is by the band The 1975. The song is called Sincerity is Scary, and I am absolutely stealing the title for the title of this episode. But the reason it comes to mind, and the reason that that song kind of triggered the overall idea of what I wanted to talk about, is that there's a couple lines in it. I would recommend listening to the whole song. It's a very good song. But there's a couple lines um one of which is about halfway through the song and it says and why would you believe that you could control how you're perceived when at best you're intermediately versed in your own feelings and the reason that line in particular makes me want to talk about these things is because i think that rings really true for a lot of where we are currently as a society which is people want to control this picture of who they are but they don't actually know who they are. They don't know why they react to things the way they do or often overreact because they're feeling some intense thing that they don't know how to voice. And the amount of damage that does is kind of unbelievable. The number of people that I have grown up with or spent time around who are clearly just very angry because they're suppressing how they actually feel, that they want to control others because something that someone else is doing is a reflection of something they wish they could do. But they've suppressed that part of themselves. And now they feel the need to control someone else the way they are trying to control what is going on inside of them. And in all reality, they're just completely out of control. And thus the cycle repeats. And I don't think this is just a personal issue. 
I believe it's a societal issue. And this song is about someone who understands his feelings, who wants to express them, but he doesn't know how. And even at the end of the song, after opening up about how something made him feel, it switches, and the last line of the song is, Nah, I'm just messing, because it has to be backed up with a joke. It has to be dismissed, because it's too scary to feel the thing we're feeling. Too scary to be sincere. And I feel like we've taught, and this is going to be just as watered down as it gets, but it makes it easier to talk about. I feel like half the population, men specifically, do feel unable to express their true selves. And when we are incapable of expressing our true selves, we lose out on a deeper, more meaningful version of who we are, and it makes it impossible to have a true, deep, meaningful connection. The stigma around male vulnerability needs to be challenged, because if we challenge it, we can create a more inclusive space and a more empathetic culture. And it's not about discarding humor or anything like that. I will always make a stupid joke. But it's about allowing room for statements of feeling to be conveyed without the need to back it up with a joke or dismiss it. So in my own personal journey to try to be more sincere, there's a, a couple practices that I, I try to act on. So I will quickly list them out. This is not a self-help book, uh, but these are things that I find helpful. First is just embracing my own vulnerability and allowing myself to be viewed as a human with feelings. It sounds simple. It was difficult. I'm still bad at it. I'm still working on it. Number two is just to listen more actively, to actually hear what someone else is saying and take it in and not be reactionary towards it because I don't yet know how to process my own feelings about what was said. So by just actively listening and waiting to react until after I have a chance to digest what was said is helpful for me and it allows me to be more genuine in the conversations I'm having. Three would be challenging stereotypes. Hey, it's fine if I cry at a movie. It's fine. I have feelings. It's okay to have feelings. Four would be seeking out spaces or other people who are as authentic as you want to be. That way it fosters an overall community working towards the same thing. If you hang out with only people who are full of shit and don't talk about anything but work, then you're not going to be encouraged to also open up and be a real person. And lastly is to reflect and adjust. It's a work in progress. I don't have the answers. I'm not doing it all right. And even once I get it down, I will change as a person. The things I care about, the needs I have, those things should be ever evolving because life is ever evolving. And the way I approach conversations that require honesty and sincerity will have to change as well. I think that overall, sincerity is a very powerful tool when it comes to change. It helps bridge gaps, it helps humanize, it helps foster empathy, and it builds trust. If you know a person is being honest with you, even if that honesty stings, you trust them a little bit more. It's the person who only says what you want to hear, or the person who is just so filled with hate that there's no sincerity in anything that they're feeling that you know you need to stay away from. So as we navigate the complexities of this modern age, I'm just going to ask that we commit to being a little more authentic in our interactions. I think that the number one piece of feedback that I have gotten from this podcast has just been people saying that they appreciate how open and honest I am in all of the things I talk about, that it feels unfiltered and it feels natural and it feels like I'm not saying anything I don't believe in, even down to I had someone compliment that I don't edit out when I mispronounce a word, or if there's a stutter, or a stammer, or if there's an awkward gap, that I'm comfortable leaving those things in, and for me that is important because there's an authenticity to things not being perfect, to it feeling correct, 
And I will be honest, I, I fucked up saying authenticity like 14 times in the beginning of this. And I edited all those out because it was unlistenable. I was a little tongue-tied at the top. So there's things like that that I'm happy to cut out. But for the most part, I want this to feel real and feel natural. And so not clipping things out is a big part of that for me. So as I work to be more authentic and as I hope that I encourage others specifically men to express their true feelings and break from these stupid stereotypes and just allow themselves to be authentic and to fail and to be wrong and to admit that they were wrong and to admit that they have feelings and talk about those feelings. I hope that as we prioritize substance over appearance, it lets us be people of value and of depth and of honesty and together we can create a culture where sincerity is not just appreciated, but it's celebrated. And in closing, things are bad right now. The world is getting harder and harder to live in. And here in the States, we are running headfirst into fascism and religious extremism that wants to take rights away from the most vulnerable people first, but then expand that out and take them away from everyone. And in those times, it is very easy to feel cynical and to act cynically because to act with cynicism is to not act at all. It is to sit back and accept what's happening and just complain about it instead of taking action. And I feel like sincerity is the exact opposite of that. Sincerity requires us to do a lot of work internally, and then it requires us to take that work outward. So let's take that work outward. Let's not sit back and just cast blame instead of taking responsibility and taking action. Sincerity and honesty push us to expand ourselves. They require us to do the work. And if we do the work, things will get better. If you find sincerity to be scary, maybe it's time to face your fears. Thanks for listening. Give it five stars, because my dad is awesome and cool.